Hi, this is Paul Ostrowski with Valence Software, and I want to take the moment to go through and show some things about Intel's new tool called W4. It's a triage tool for digital forensics, and it has some really neat features and capabilities that I think you may be interested in. So let's jump into it. Uh, when you start, you easily bring a source in here, run index, and when index runs, it creates this summary tab. And actually, when the tool is indexing, this tab is being built. And if you actually want to look at any of the items shown here, you can actually jump to the various artifacts or categories, as we call them. And you can actually look at data that is being acquired in the index as it's indexing. But I'm not going to show that because nobody really wants to stay here and watch me just index a database. But I do want to jump into the tool. So this is a little bit different than our other tools. First thing you see is that on the search tab, we have a listing up here called all sources. And this is one of my favorite things about the tool is I can go look at what the source is. And then I can actually just dive down and look at individual users and see the information related to a single user. So if you're interested in an individual user, you can click here and filter all the data right from the start. We also have these areas here called categories, which I described earlier. We talk about the system, the programs, devices, and this is related to devices that have been connected to the system that you're interested in. So for example, USB devices, activity on those USB devices. We also go through and break it into category of files and folders, the browser history, uh, items that we call notable items, like encrypted items. We also have a couple of different categories on program usage. And this is interesting because we will actually show things and I will actually go through this in a moment and show you some of the notable programs that were run by various users. And we can also bring in mobile data from like Celebrite Report, Oxygen Reports, and also show those chat messages and things related to that under the communications category. I also have document category, media category, and then transportation links, which are really interesting because this actually shows what took place when uh, a USB drive was connected and what information was passed over it. And then I also have the abilities to create tags and also import keyword lists. And if you create tags, they show up under this category called tags. And then they, we also have the keyword list here. So let's, going up, let's go up and start at the beginning here. And I want to just filter all my information by one individual that I'm interested in, which is Joe Bloggs. And once I clicked on that, you now notice that all these numbers changed based on, because now I'm filtering on Joe Bloggs. And to start with, I might be interested in the sessions on Joe Bloggs. So I can see here, Joe Blogg has 34 sessions. So if I click on that, now we populate the rest of this window. And as you can see over here, I'm now showing a bunch of activities of when Joe Bloggs logged on and logged off. Down here, we have the related data for all the case, which is the dark gray. And then we have this blue line here showing the information that's related to what we just selected here. So I'm showing here that he's logged on, logged off. And if I click on it, any of these points, I will then populate the area over here, which shows properties related to that information and where we gathered that information, so the exact location. And I can do things here. I can tag items. I can actually add a link graph, and we'll talk about this later. Um, and you could save items or go to a native program if it, there's related information for that. And you can also open up the parent item if there's a parent. And I can look at this information a couple ways. I can look at an event log, which I actually like. It's one of my favorite features of the tool, is I can now look at when an individual logged on, when they logged off, and the timetable as it went along through the history of the operating system. You could show thumbnails, but thumbnails are really just images that are related to what you are looking at. 
And then we also support geolocation if you have a database for where the IP addresses are related to with regards to the information being shown. So I've got Joe blogs selected. I wanna look at a few other things with regards to them. And so you can actually click, you could do shift click and select a whole bunch of items or you could do control click and just select one item at a time. And I can also do control click to select items like now I'm selecting users and I'm also from a session and I'm now also selecting USB drives. So I can see now in this timeline when a USB drive was added. And if I wanted to also see some activity regarding that, I could go down here and I now know this is his drive because that's what it's listed there. And I could actually click on, and you could also see by the number that these 12 items are related to our overall search of Joe Blogs filtering. And so if I click on information related to the device activity, now you're gonna see that the device started accessing documents and, and items like that. And if I click on these, I will get even more data about where in the registry it was gathered and information about it. I can also look at raw data uh, that can also be processed when you're indexing. And then the final thing I, I'm interested also in with regards to that is what information was transported during those sessions with the USB drive. And I can go down here and click and select that. Now I'm selecting that. And now you can see you get a very good picture of when he logged on, when items were moved, the dates, what was changed on those. So, you know, this file was created and it gives you a nice time log of this. And all of this can be exported into a report. And we'll talk about that shortly. I just wanted to give you an idea and show you some of these items. And if I actually go back to just the USB devices, I can say here, I just wanna show a specific type of item. And so I'm gonna go back down to look at the USB devices. If I can slide back up, there we go. And so if I click on one of these, I'm gonna get the same raw data. Now, if I click on this link graph, I now show a link graph of this USB drive. And it's, this is useful if you'd like to see a graphical representation. You can see Joe Bloggs is the user. You can see some other information regarding the USB drive, its serial number, and also um, some information that there are 23 items that went back and forth to this drive. And I'm gonna go, well, that's an interesting thing. If I wanted to see those, if I click on it, now we populate this area over here and we show those 23 items that are going back and forth. And this might be useful to save as a picture. And that's another thing, we can actually save this as a graph and I can, I've got a few in here and if I click on it, you'll see what they look like and that is actually what we're looking at. And you can save it and then you can later use it in a report. So going back to the searches, I wanna go back and clear show just the USB drive activity. And now I have all this information. And this is where you may wanna start doing things like I wanna add a note here. So I can add an event note that when I actually print out in a report, it's gonna say something at this point, you can put whatever text you want and it's gonna be called an event note. I can also tag items by selecting them in, in this area. So I could select a number of them and say, I wanna tag, I'll add these as a tag, or I could click here and add it as a tag. As you could tell, there's already a tag that's been added to these because it says Joe Bloggs uh, transportation tag. And then here's the information regarding that and raw data about, and if there's information, if you select anything that's a file or type of data, you will then see information in here show up, give you a preview of what that is. So for example, if I wanted to see what that specification was, it's gonna give you a view of it here um, and you can scroll through it. You can zoom in on it if you want so that you can actually get an idea of what you're looking at. 
And this could be useful for helping to identify something early on that might be of something of interest that you are looking at for this user. And so let's go back and I'm gonna go select just one of the other items we talked about earlier, which was, I'm interested in what type of activity he was doing on a dark net. Um, so what I'm showing here are basically 15 events that occurred on the dark net. You can see, you know, they're all related to Joe blogs. You can see when target files were created um, and other activities with regards to accessing uh, a Tor browser took place. And this obviously is of interest if somebody is doing things on the dark net and they're not supposed to be there, that's probably a good indication that there's a problem. So finally, and the last thing I really like to show is the report structure. Um, we've done a really great job at updating the report structure. It quickly creates reports. I can add items to the title page. I can add fields and it says custom fields, but really it's just what you want to name and add to the title page of the report that you're generating. In this case, I created a case name, case created date, report created date, and actually put these values in for it. You could show headers and footers on the report and the document. And additionally, you can ask this tool to create a contents page for it. And then you can also create a summary section and also indicate what's include types and sources of information in that summary. This is really where the report gets built up. So to add something to this, you can actually go in here and say, add a section. It's gonna say, which one of the categories do you want added to that? And one of the more important things is, why are tags important? Is I can actually tag stuff, and then I can add that to a separate section that will appear in the report under tags, which is shown here. And you could select anything out of here. I could go back here to program usage if I wanted to and say, oh, I'm really interested in his dark net activity. I wanna add that, we're gonna add it to the end. Um, I'm going to want to display it as you can display things as tables, events is like the timeline that we saw earlier. Or I could show image galleries if you're looking at images and it's gonna show it as an image. In this case, you know, I could say, oh, I want to look at the timeline and I'm going to, you can either select portrait or landscape. If you select timeline, it's going to actually not give you any option to put any metadata in there. If you go as list, it's going to ask you, okay, what columns of, do you want to appear in this report and that metadata in, in this various columns and in what order you want those columns. So you could add a section, remove it. I can go back and remove that section. And when I generate this, so I only have one of these sections listed as event list. Um, we can walk through it, but it basically will show the data like I showed you earlier in the event list, showing you what is in the order of items that took place based on what I selected there. I can include uh, tags. And I also include notes in a timeline version. So those notes and the tags that I indicated that you could add to a timeline can be added to the report also. And this is where you would add, come back and say, oh, remember those link graphs I saved? This is where you would add them and say, I want this link graph added to this. And your choices of producing report, you can either produce it in the PDF form or you could put, produce it as a Word document. And if you produce it as a Word document, obviously you can edit it in Word and use it for other sources. Uh, to produce a report, you click here, it says produce report. It's going to ask me, where do I wanna put it? And of course I put everything on my desktop. And it's gonna replace report. There's a little box that comes up here and says, I'm, I'm planning to execute this and it's gonna go work through and it will then execute and say that it's, it's up here saying it's creating the report. And then when the report's done, it actually comes up and gives you another status that it says it successfully finished the report. So if we go up to my desktop and I look at investigation report, 
here's the report that's generated, here are those fields that you can create, there's the table of contents, and the only thing I'm going to scroll down to, there's the summary, which had sources, information, and types, of, of which are basically the same as categories that are involved in the case, how many items there were for each, the users, and the next section will be basically the timeline of what I, I selected earlier. And you could see various metadatas added based on what I selected in the report. And here's what I was interested in showing was here's the sessions. This is a timeline view, so you get time, you get dates. And if any of this has tags, you would see the tags in it, but I didn't add any tags. So that's about it I wanted to show. I think it's a great tool. It's quick when it comes to indexing. You can quickly index faster than you can with Intella, but, and figure out what you're looking at and seeing if there's something of interest in the system operating system based on users and activities that took place on that operating system. But once you're done with the report here, another neat item is that you can take any case that was indexed in W4 and index it in Intella, and you can even find more information. So I've done, I've had this case indexed in W4, and I also went back and brought it into Intella, which I've just pulled up, and I actually indexed the case there. And now you can look at the difference where W4 does an index, but it does it quickly. Intella does a much deeper dive in its indexing capabilities. And you'll see that there's a difference between what W4 indexed and what Intella indexed. And we actually provide you that in this categories view. It says, here's the W4 case, here's the Intella case, and here's the delta between those two. And you can see that Intella certainly indexed a lot more items than W4 did. But W4 is meant to be a triage tool, which is meant to quickly index, look at what's on an operating system, make a decision. Is this something we want to do further investigations of? Well, I appreciate your time, and I hope this was a great little learning session for the capabilities of W4, and hopefully you enjoy using W4. Thank you very much. Bye.